Wait, baby, calm down. Baby, calm down I ain't now. got time for this. Move. Baby, I'm here now. What you doing? This ain't none of my fault. Whose fault is it? It's his fault. You always got some type of excuse, man. I just got no excuse this time. Seriously, this is his fault. He called me talking about his calls broke down. You know what I'm talking about? And I was on my way home to you. I had told him. He said, could I help him? I was like, no, nah, I got to go do the right thing. You know what I'm saying? But he started crying and stuff. Talking about his engine. He had a queef engine or something like that. His carburetor had jaundice. So I didn't have to go and pick him up outside of the road. Because the only reason why I did that is because all that Jesus stuff you've been teaching me. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. You're supposed to help. What would Jesus do? Why are you wearing a cape? He a magician. How am I supposed to know? Listen, baby, look, look now. I'm trying to do the right thing. I only did this because of you. You've been trying to get my life right. It's been because of you. I'm doing it. I wouldn't even help the needy had it not been for you. That's why I even came over here to tell you. I want to thank you for all the stuff you you changed my life. Thank you, baby. And now that it's over, I'll never be sober. I couldn't believe. And now I'm so high. And now I'm so high. And what is going on, everybody? This is your boy, Blake Money, Blake Weather. Welcome to another episode, Unfiltered Bachelor Atlanta Breakdown Series. I am your host, Blake Money, Blake Weather. Hi, how is everybody doing? Let me introduce the panel before we get into this <clears throat> breakdown of episode five. What is this? Barbershop. And oh my God, one of the best episodes for sure. Let's get into the panel real quick. You know him, you love him. Straight out of the mean streets of Austin, Texas, St. Elmo, over off of Old Torf. I'm telling people where you live, Jeff, so they can go visit you. Yeah. It's Jeff. Let's go on Kitty Corner to uh, the St. Elmo Brewing Company. <laughs> Jeff, how you doing, man? I'm well, I'm well. How about you guys? Oh, staying Corona free and all, and you you know how that be. Uh, of course, our other Dude, co Corona free is the way to be. That's the only way to be. If you you got to be Corona free to be on this podcast. Speaking of Corona free, our other co-host, you know him, you love him. He's your guy. He's moved from from here in Austin, but he's down in Denver. It's Terry. Terry, how you doing, my man? Baby, <laughs> baby, <laughs> baby, fucking baby. I, just, I couldn't wait for this episode. This, I, I've watched this episode at least 20 times. In I'm all, watching it right now. In all fairness, so I have it on too. In all fairness, when I asked Harry to come on the podcast, and before we knew he was going to be a co-host on here, he was like, yeah, I'll come on for that episode. He's like, but let me know when you do uh, season two, episode five, because listen, I want to come on for that shit. <laughs> and I was like, for sure. So for sure, we have Terry on. And for sure, we had to have Terry on for this episode since he, he called it out. Terry, I'm going to let you get started with this fucking episode. I know you love it. Top three takeaways. Before we even get into IMDb facts, we'll get into that right after you. But I want to hear your top three things, takeaways from this episode. I'm so eager. Uh, just the very beginning. <laughs> Bibby's walking in. Talking about a quinceanera. <laughs> I didn't know when I didn't know she was fifteen. I thought quinceanera eighteen. Why she wear a wedding dress? And he's just like, what was she doing? Why is she talking about the essays? Or like, what did he try? To do? Oh just, yeah. You know, he has the Bluetooth and he's carrying on the conversation. You don't know whether he's talking to you or is he talking on the phone. Just. Right off the bat, hilarity, hilarity is going to ensue. You know this guy's a troublemaker. Yes. Uh, number two is I like Zaxby's. <laughs> I don't think there's a Zaxby's dinner, and there was one in New Braunfels. And so when you know he's all like, "Hell yeah, I want," they like, "What do you What do you say? Don't be stupid, or yeah, don't be stupid. You know, you know, I want some Zaxby's. You know, I want some. You know, I want some Zaxby's." <laughs> bomb you know don't mess with chick-fil-a go to zaxby's people. <laughs> Fuck yes all right number three terry and number three is just at the end where you know he tries to be petty and chooses a new barber and he realizes at the very first beginning of the episode bibby's like you know you don't want anybody else cutting your hair up and in here and you know he can't really describe what his haircut was. He just says the usual. Bibby does it, and now he's like with this new guy. He's like, "What do you want it at? Two or three? And he's like, "Uh, uh, uh, uh." I, I don't, I, he's like, 
And, you know, and Bibby just gets a new customer to go sit in. And, you know, he's sitting there like, oh, now my head's going to be all fucked up now. I, I love that point. I'm going to come back to that point, but I love that point. Jeff, before you kick off with your three, kick us off with the IMDb real quick. Barber Shop is, and this is interesting because, <clears throat> so you'll remember the last episode, Helen, was the second lowest rated episode of the season, right? Yes. Barber Shop at a 9.1 is the second highest rated episode of this season. Interesting, interessante, you know? Mm-hmm. Um, director is Donald Glover. Childish Gambino himself, Donald Glover. And we got one piece of trivia. Uh, Stephanie Robinson was nominated for the 2018 Emmy Award for Outstanding Writing for a Comedy Series. Category 4, this episode, Barbershop, but lost to Amy Sherman Palladino for Pilot. Uh, the, so the, not the, much trivia. Yeah, that, sh- that show, I forget, with a Marvelous Miss Something or whatever the fuck that show is. Marvelous Miss Maisel? Yeah, Miss Maisel. I do hear that show is awesome, but I've just never checked to it out. To lose to the Pilot episode? Fuck white people. This fucking <laughs> show is fucking... This episode was badass. I'm going to add one more piece of trivia, too. Uh, the guy the, the guy that plays Bibby is a real uh, real comedian, a real-life comedian named Robert S. Powell. And he's fucking hilarious. Everybody should go watch him. I watched some of his stuff on YouTube today and like damn near peed my pants. It was fucking, it's just, it's, it's, it's Bibby all over. It's Bibby all over. What? Are you looking up Robert S. Powell? Is that who you're looking up? No, more. I'm tr- I'm backing up in the episode because there's, Okay, never mind. No, 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 it's not him. There's a sign behind Bibby for a comedy club open mic night, and I'm oh, wow. like, I swear to God, if that's him on the fucking poster, <laughs> right? Yeah, yeah. I was trying to read it, but I couldn't see it because I was like, yeah, who's who's on that comedy poster? I couldn't see it. Uh, Jeff, kick off. Definitely someone else. Kick off your three. All right, number one. Bibby starts with doing something that I fucking hate, and that's talking on your phone. Like when you got the Bluetooth piece <laughs> while you're talking with someone yes. else. I, I hate that. But there is one thing I hate more, and that's when you aren't on your Bluetooth and you just are walking around with your phone on fucking speaker oh talking God, to it I fucking around other people. And if if you do that, you're a piece of trash and stop doing it. I don't care what your argument is. It's wrong. Uh, so that's one. Two. I don't know how the fuck Al didn't beat the shit out of Bibby like, <laughs> at least four times over in this goddamn episode, man. That is how well respected a barber is in the black community. Well, and that brings me to number three. I don't get it. <laughs> <laughs> I know it's because I'm white. Yes. I know it's because I've got the easiest goddamn hair on and there's like worst case scenario i can take my clippers in my bathroom right now and cut my own hair and everything will be fine Mm-mm. so man it just this just reinforces the like the whole i mean i don't want to say stereotype I, I think the better word is atmosphere of the black barbershop man no matter how much i try and understand it i do not understand uh, it. even the movie i mean barbershop's not a great ex- it's a great example but really like it's probably going to be too. the closest example you you'd be able to get unless you came to like a barbershop <laughs> right? so well, it's all shit, look at uh, look at the show luke cage yeah the I mean, home setting yeah. is the barbershop and the barbershop i mean it's just yeah. it's been a long well, just for forever it's just been a, a place where you know b- black men and women for beauty shops could just congregate freely without ever just worrying about somebody to come in and kick their teeth in or, you know, they're just black people cutting hair. So for, they got left alone and it was a place where they could just discuss things that are going on in the neighborhood, discuss their daily lives. Just, it was like, you know, just the water cooler where they could do water cooler talk or just even important planning meetings they could do there undisturbed. Was just now, at the barbershop. So that's why the barbershop is just a, a absolute killer. Now, don't get me wrong. Community. I will also say, um, I don't think it's necessarily a bad thing that I don't get it. You know, I mean, it's just, it's not yeah, something it's I've just, been a part of or so, a culture so, I've been a part of. To, to, to touch I, on- I actually think that it is also important to note when, when there is something that you just truly don't understand this much. I do think we need to get to a point where we can just be like, 
I don't get it. I want to learn about it, but I don't get it. I think we need to stop being so afraid of not understanding everything and right, pretending yeah. like, oh, yeah, I completely get what you're what, talking about. Say, no, I, I don't. don't. It's, yeah. I was like, okay, well, I appreciate say that. Yeah, yeah, I appreciate the, the, put the putting that respect on that name. Uh, I will say, for me, I, I get my haircut. I get my hair. I've always got my haircut. Like, I used to go to stylists and stuff. And then as I got older and like wanted to get like just like fresh shit, like I had a barber that lived across the street from my house. And it was, it's, this was like the first time I was introduced as a little Mexican dude. And he cut all the black people's hair and he cut all the Mexican people's hair. And this is an extended trope. What I, what I thought about this as uh, y'all were talking this isn't an extended trope of like, if, if you've ever gone to your barber, and you've had to sit out an extra like 10, 15 minutes because the barber was like, hey, man, can I just get him real quick? And you're like, man, fuck, dude. Like, I came here like on time, like for a reason. This shit happens. Like, this shit happens sometimes where like the barber like double books or like they like somebody want, they want to fit in a homie real quick. Or they're like, I got like I had 10 extra minutes or you were late by two minutes. Like they fit in somebody when you're supposed to get your hair cut. And then they try to fit in somebody. Like, I've had this happen to me. And it's just like the disrespect that's happening right now. So this is an extended, <laughs> this is an extended trope of having to wait for your barber when you're there on time. Yes. That's yeah. exactly what this is. I related <laughs> exactly. to, I related okay. to this so fucking much. Like I get it. Like I look like half white, but like I, 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 I've grown up on the other side of the streets and like I know what the fuck it's like. And like this, this, I felt right. every being of like, fucking paper boy been like baby you we fucking cut my hair please <laughs> <laughs> so obviously i haven't dealt with it in the barbershop uh or you know getting the haircuts i do things but i have definitely dealt with times when like i've had an appointment and you know like it's been like oh you know we just gotta push back a little bit blah, blah, blah. um but so so here's the thing i don't get about this episode and i think this is i think the episode this is the joke of the episode is isn't the other side of it like, you know, the understanding like, all right, well, you know, this happens. Sometimes they need the extra time, 15 minutes. But isn't the other side of it that, well, it's then their responsibility to take that person they double booked or squeezed in and get them in and out as quickly as possible, which is the exact opposite of what BB is doing. Maybe trying to do so much extra. Uh, let me get. Uh, was that already that ten fifteen minutes into an entire <laughs> fucking day? Uh, was that your three, Jeff? <laughs> That was your yeah, three, you right? are okay. my friend. Perfect. Um, we finally meet Bibby. Ironically, episode six of season one, we hear Bibby's name mentioned. And how do we hear it mentioned? Fucking Paperboy talks about, oh, my guy Bibby. He, pee, he gets pee in a condom and he tapes it to his leg. To pass the P test. Oh shit! <laughs> that's him. It's so oh, of course it's, that's him. it's so fucking funny because like you're like the man after, of many things. After the you meet Bibby, things. you're like, oh, that's some Bibby shit right there. Like that is some shit Bibby would do. <laughs> he, would, he would be in the clean the, the clean piss gang, wouldn't he? He's gonna clean piss game to be in. He in the clean piss game, baby. Um. I love it. I, but but I, ironically, it's episode six. We're introduced to him in, in season one. We hear the name. It's episode. Oh, it's it's episode five. So almost episode six of yeah, of season sorry. two. Well, yeah, I was I was a stretch right there, but I tried. Uh, I love how <laughs> when Bibby talks, so Bibby's on the phone, or, uh, and then he gets off and he talks to Paperboy. Bibby talks about he's like. Again, the theme of Robin season. He said, "Hey man, did you hear about that that phone shop that got the uh, T-Mobile that got robbed? Man, they they broke into it, <laughs> took all the phones." And he's like, "Also, let me know if you need an iPhone, or T-Mobile. Like, I can get you hooked up." And you're like, "Bibi, you had something to do with this. I fucking know it." <laughs> what did he call them? <laughs> savages. <laughs> Bunch of savages. I know. <laughs> hey, baby, let me know if you need a, out here. Baby, let and me know if you need an iPhone. Like, <laughs> but, what do you believe these horrid mongrels did to that store? By the way, I should let anybody know. <laughs> like, let anybody know who has T-Mobile. I got iPhones, and you're like, what the fuck, dude? So, Bibby is that 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 fucking just that. Ugh, you're like, you fucking scoundrel fucking ah we can't get rid of you because i may have something to go off that but i want to wait until i hear your third before i point it out cut the hair real good and then it so cut the hair real good perfect is this is actually lightly touching on on terry's last point and it's actually my last point too but it's not i don't want to just point out paperboy having to go and like re-up and like try to get another haircut with another person but i want to touch on that 
So not to completely steal Terry's point, but to make it more general, that feeling of going to somebody new and getting a haircut after you're either pissed off at them or like they move or like they're not there anymore and you don't know what the fuck happened and you have to go to a new haircut person and having to explain like you having to learn you're not in the hair game i'm not in the hair game nobody here is in the hair game and you have to learn what your haircut is called otherwise like when you go to somebody else you're going to be exactly like paperboy i've been there i don't know if terry been there jeff i don't know if you've been there but i have been there where you know i want my hair a specific way and they and i'm like hey can i get uh can I get like a, 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 like just like a little bit taken off the sides and the back? And they're like, okay, cool. You want like a two, one and a half? And I'm like, uh, um, the, 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 um, uh, I, I don't, I think the person who did my hair, you, you're trying to explain like what they did and like you're trying to pull up pictures and it just doesn't make sense. But we, anybody who has switched barbers, switch haircut people, I feel like guys, gals, anybody, you go through that feeling of like, uh, Fuck, we're going to have to learn from from scratch, huh? <laughs> so those are my things. I remember a specific incident when I was a kid uh, when I went to a barber, and I didn't know what the part uh, – like when you're parting your hair, I didn't really know what it meant. I thought it meant like which way your hair points. I didn't know it meant like the line. So I kept trying to tell the guy that I wanted my uh, the part on both sides, and he was like, <laughs> <laughs> what? And he did – to this guy's credit, he probably spent five to seven minutes trying to figure out what the hell I was saying. So what good on him, but <laughs> yeah. I get it. I get it. Hey, that's a that's and a, I was like six, so I, I couldn't understand why this wasn't working. Jeff, that's a classic to. that's a classic Todd Dillerson move right there, huh? Todd Dillerson. <laughs> <laughs> you mean Ty Dolla Sign? Uh, yeah, but yeah, I feel, Ty Sign. <laughs> I feel like everybody relates to that to that moment. Um, yeah. Jeff, you had something to tie in with one of these points, man. Um, bro, it's not just that we find out that Bibby is the guy who clearly stole from the uh, Team Old Star. Fuck! Later in the episode, we actively see him stealing lumber. <laughs> <laughs> From that beige lady. You said beige lady. This brings me to two points real quick. This brings me to two points real quick as we kick this off. Rob, when is robbing season? And clearly, Bibby is is no stranger to robbing. He's he's robbing a lot in a lot of ways. He has robbed phones, or he is associated with the people who rob phones. He clearly is robbing wood. He's stealing wood, and he's clearly stealing Paperboy's time. And we suspect he took uh, money out of that lady's fucking purse. She said, "I know you weren't stealing per- oh, money out of my purse." Or that he's been taking money because of the bills, the the water stops, electricity stops. <laughs> so she was probably giving him money for that, and he took I, that. I love his excuse when he's like, "You know, Donald." Trump, you know the devil always trying to get it. <laughs> just, just that whole scene just wait wait just goes into that lady. He is so good with excuses. That is like just you know, that's a real character with he was like an comment. improv. This, but I know people like that I was who gonna, just can think of a lie. Like that this gets me to my next point. Let's point out some of the favorite Bibby lines. As we dig into this episode oh, some more. God. So Terry just called out my number one one. He called that lady. He, oh, go ahead and call him beige lady. <laughs> 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 I, he pointed out at another one too. I thought Kinsey meant 18. And another one was when he's telling the son, he's like, I always tell you, son, don't do this. Don't do that. Son, stop, stop using my, my good lotion to jerk off. <laughs> <laughs> And then um, when they're walking up the stairs, when when they're coming back, you know, from from, uh, you know, oh like God. fucking the whole thing. And he's like, it, did anybody else pee a little bit when we had that wreck? Nah, just, just me. <laughs> <laughs> and then my fifth and final one is when he explains the fucking day back to Vapor Boy. And he's like, <laughs> oh. <laughs> we ate, you know, you, you spoke to the youth. We ate at that white lady's house. Then we hit that Asian lady from the back. <laughs> <laughs> I'm crying. I'm crying. I can't. I can't with fucking me. <laughs> oh, any other quotes anybody else um, wants to touch on right now? Okay. Love, okay. Uh, uh, Are um, these your leftovers? No. 
Well, you know, I ate the chicken. I ate, the, I ate the wing and the sauce and a little bit of the bread. <laughs> but those tenders are all yours. Uh, <laughs> when he's talking to, I guess, his, uh, his boo thing that he's sleeping with and he's explaining why he's late. Oh, my God, yes. And he's just like, you know, I had to help him out. You know, I tried, you told me to do the right thing. I was trying to do the right thing. You know, his engine, he had a queef engine. Yeah. Uh, you know, his, <laughs> his carburetor had John did. <laughs> and then she goes, well, why is he in a face? He's a magician. How am I supposed to know? <laughs> oh, fuck. Oh, my God. I'm dead. <laughs> what is it? <laughs> the look on Paperboy's face when he says his carburetor has jogged it. He's like, Nigga, I know he did not just say an obvious lie to this woman. <laughs> you know what that specific line reminded me of? Oh, God. The ladies' man. I don't care what you say. Chlamydia is a soup. I have seen it on the storeroom shelf. <laughs> I remember that, yeah. Well, you can have your... That's my opinion. <laughs> oh, man. Yeah, that was... And then that, uh, that little uh, kid, how, too. Uh, how about when he's taken off after the kids and Paperboy's going to put the seatbelt on and goes, yeah, that's right, you put that on. And the Paperboy's yanking it and he goes, oh, yeah, that one doesn't work so good. <laughs> Oh my god, dude! Everything every, when 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 the Bibby's phone goes off and fucking Paperboy's like, "What?" He's like, "Raindrops and peach emoji," and then, <laughs> and Bibby comes back and he's like, "No, nah, don't be touching that. Don't be going through that." <laughs> and he handed him the phone originally. How does Paperboy not know what that means? By the way, I have no clue. I ha I mean, I'm I'm sh I mean, I don't know. I don't know, man. Like, he probably not ended all that <laughs> freaky shit. I guess he's saying. Also, when Bibby takes when he when he leaves with Paperboy the first time, and Paperboy walks through the front door, he's like, "Nah, we can't go through the front. There's them people out there," and I'm like, "Who are them people? <laughs> Who?" The Bibby? best say he was talking about, I think, from the first when he's like. Oh yeah, and then Essay is after me now because he was messing around with that oh, little girl. Right, so right. I think that's who he might have been referring to as them people. Interesting. But who knows what Bibby? That could be all kinds of people that might be after him. That, it's but I, I want to say it's the essays he mentioned earlier. That's, what the king say? That makes yeah. sense. That makes sense. Uh, then the next part, uh, just another funny line when he was like, and then she hit all the. Uh, what kind of petty person do that? She hit all the plunges away. <laughs> 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 Talk about she don't trust me around plywood and rubber. <laughs> that one reminded me of uh, the movie True Lies. <laughs> Man, my ex, she, when she moved out, she took everything. She took the ice cube trays from the freezer. What type of frigid bitch takes the ice cube trays from the freezer? <laughs> that was good. That's good. That's a good th uh, reference to that. Um, I, I I love I love everything about Bibby. Like there there is no scene in here where I don't like. I want more Bibby. Can we it, it, can we have Bibby in the third third season, please? Like I, I want I want Bibby. I want Bibby back. And so uh, apparently uh, I was watching uh, Brian Tyree Henry like a, and I was telling Jeff about this, and I'll send you the link too, Terry. But he did this interview with GQ where he was just talking about specific moments, specific episodes, and he talked about this one, and he was like. Mm -hmm. Dude, the dude that played Bibby was in character the whole time, like was just <laughs> was was just being him the whole time. And he's like, and when we were driving, he's like, that's him driving. So when I was telling him, Bibby, watch the road, Bibby, watch the road. I was trying to stay in character, but he was not looking at the road. He's like, we obviously we didn't hit anybody, but like he was not looking at the road like he was doing full on Bibby. And I was legit concerned for my life. And I thought that was great. He's like, so if you see me scared, Dude. I'm legit scared. And I'm like, oh, my God. So that Which is another thing that in real life does fucking drive me crazy. When motherfuckers is like looking at you and not looking at the road. That do that. I was just like, <laughs> stop looking at me while you're talking, man. Just look forward, man. We can have this conversation. We don't need to make eye contact. Stop trying to make eye contact with me, man. Right? Like, <laughs> man, if you decide to drive, that's cool. But then there's like a somewhat unspoken agreement that you're not going to kill me. Right. I don't want to die. I do not want to die. Uh, so, yeah, there's 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 that. Obviously, in this episode, too, no, this is the first episode I think we see with with no urn. Oh, no, no. It's the other one with uh, with the B.A.N. episode. B -B -A -N. 
Ah, yeah. second episode, we see no Urn, no Darius, no other characters, really. It does go back to the point where, um, one, the interesting thing is, the last time we didn't see Urn, it was when Donald Glover was directing the episode, mm-hmm. BAN. Right. But it also goes back to the point where there's no episode in, there's no character in the entire series that's been in every episode, which is very unusual. Um, usually you get at least usually you get a couple of characters throughout, if not at least one. So, yeah, I, right. I actually like that. Yeah, it's it's like each episode is dedicated to, okay, this is what this episode's about. And and I think that this is a great follow-up, really, just from a story arc. Like, how do you get any more feelier and in, in your feels than us coming off the hinges of Earn and Van's sort of love story that's falling apart? Like, there's no way to top that with another love story. You do it with humor. And they do it perfectly with this fucking episode. It's so fucking great. Um, I, I, I like there's there's so many fucking great moments that that I, that I love from it. Outside of everything that we have, would talked you about. guys have tipped BB? No, fuck BB. No, <laughs> no, fuck BB. That would have been mad as hell. I'm a little surprised Paperboy paid him at all. I know. To be completely honest, I was actually really surprised, especially like, I mean, dude, Al shot a dude for kicking his uh, mirror. Like what BB was doing, shit. Mm. And you know that's just BB just exploiting just how well respected he knows he he is. He knows he can get away with a lot of bullshit, and he did. He took advantage of him. He hustled him. Oh, yeah. you know, we, he we, robbed him of his time and everything. You we're, know, we're we gonna we're we gonna his entire day. We're gonna say the word shysty. He's being he's a shyster. Is that what he we're doing? is a shyster. <laughs> he's, a, he's a straight up con man. Should we tell the viewers at home that we definitely had to make sure we, we like, could yeah, use that word know, before the that episode? Was, that was so right. <laughs> it felt like it's when, you know, derogatory and defamatory, but towards lawyers specifically. <laughs> Well, we, we 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 flat out looked into that one. <laughs> <laughs> that reminds me of when uh, Van. Uh, when you know he said I caught them red-handed being racist. Oh and yeah, was like, that's racist. <laughs> like, I'm just playing. I was like, is it? And then when we said that, I was like, is it? Yeah, I had to look I'm it up. Be like, sure. for real. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I I love the whole episode too. I I just thought about this. That there's two things I want to bring up. One, Paperboy. Well, three things actually. First is on the smaller token. This whole episode, Paperboy got a fucked up haircut, and everybody points it. The little kid points it out. All the, the other <laughs> Bibi's little kid points it out. You're like, what the fuck is wrong with your hair? <laughs> Are you sick or something? <laughs> Have you guys seen the picture of the kid who he tried cutting his own hair, and his clippers died halfway through? So he's got he's got you know the top like literally like half his head oh, is no. like three inches higher and it's his first day of classes in college oh no <laughs> he should have worn a hat he should have worn a hat it's one of the best pictures <laughs> i've ever seen in my life uh and then the second point before i make my bigger point is the scene when they hit that asian lady from the back and to, to word it like bibby does <laughs> when she gets out of the car and just starts screaming <laughs> And, and Bibby just fucking drives away. He hits and runs. <laughs> but oh yeah, he did. She gets out and just starts screaming in pain. And I don't know why I laughed so hard when I saw that. But I laughed so fucking hard when I saw that. Way more harder than I should have. I thought it was one of the most inadvertent. I funny feel like she was, she was faking it, and she was trying to hustle them. Exactly. Out of yes, I do too. And then that's when you like you hear Bibby. He's kind of like mouth now, like, like oh no, no, fuck that, <laughs> fuck this, hell no. <laughs> he's he's because at first he's like staying there and he's like kind of being a responsible citizen, but you know, kind of. he's out. He's telling like, Paperboy to hop over. Yeah, he's telling Paperboy to hop over, and Paperboy's like, "Get your son to drive," and he's like, "My son ain't got no license. He can't do it." <laughs> oh man, uh, and then. So to get to the to the bigger point is um, the uh, the this episode it while it doesn't have like horror like we had in the last episode or like like something scary it it has a lot of suspense. It's this one. It's, it, it's anxiety. It, it, it is, and it and, oh yeah, and it makes because it's like 
you are Paperboy. Like, Paperboy is your point of view character in this episode, and you are along this journey with them. And you do not want you, – you're basically inadvertently held hostage. And I, I, I've been there with, like, when you're, like, you're hanging out with a friend, and they go out and do, like, a whole bunch of other shit, and you're like, bro, I just want to go get some fucking food, bro. Like, I just want to go fucking do this. And they're like, no, I'm going to do one more thing real yes. quick. I'm going to do I'm gonna do one more thing real quick. And you're like, oh, okay, man. Like, real quick, though. And it ends up being, like, an hour thing. Or they go to their families. Or, like, they go and do all this. I think, I, I don't know if everybody's been there. I know for sure I've been in that moment with, like, friends. Oh, and, I've definitely been roped into, like, a, a whole day's worth of errands uh, oh, with somebody. Yeah. Oh, yeah. And it's one of those things where... where the younger you are, the more likely you are to just accept and deal with it. Whereas, like, I'm at the point now where someone tries pulling that shit, like, I'll give them maybe an hour before I'm like, all right, I'm calling an Uber. I'm just, <laughs> no, I'm just done. I'm, I'm, too, I'm too tired all the time to deal with it, your shit. So, and, and, and I think in any other moment, that would be possible. And I love how they added the, the, the element of Paperboy's literally – one buzz into his haircut and he's yeah. at the mercy of fucking Bibby to finish this shit. He'd get a lift. He'd get a fucking Uber somewhere else. He needs his fucking hair done, dude. He can't he go anywhere. To- <coughs> he's going to Hollywood. Oh, you're Hollywood. Dating Kardashian. Kardashian? <laughs> <Kardashians? laughs> uh, it's just another thing that hit home for me with Bibby it is how he tells people like, "Oh, I'm ten minutes. I'm ten minutes away. I'm I'm on the highway right now." And uh, shout out to my cousin because he's the one that got me this brand new mic. But uh, that's him. He does that stuff every time we try to hang out. Yeah, man. I you know I'm just down the road. I was like, dude, I hear you like playing with the microwave right now. You haven't left your house. What are you doing? And he stays on the infamous. Uh, black people time. That that is a thing. <laughs> I hate to admit it, but it's real. It's uh, it's, it's on it's on Bibby time. Um, and 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 the thing, yeah, the so. thing I love about that though is it is. I be doing that too sometimes. Like I'm like, oh yeah, man, I'm like seven minutes away. Like I'm actually like fifteen twenty minutes away. But like you, <laughs> you hustle people. You rope people into your world right and that's what bibby is a fast talker he's a slick he you know i, I was telling you before this i like he reminds me of like you're like well what's the word for like maybe a hustler or something and i'm like whatever the fuck jack sparrow is in pirates of the caribbean that's fucking bibby like he draws you into his world he doesn't let you bibby's go a, bibby's a con man yes he talks his way out of situations he's he's a con man yes in in and, every sp- especially when and it makes even more sense when you think con man is short for confidence man. Bibby's a con man. He's so <laughs> confident. <in everything. laughs> like you see how long he played. Like paper boy. Like you said, paper boy has shot someone. <laughs> Bibby is so confident <laughs> that he knows how far he can push him until the very end, where <clears throat> where he tries at least one more time. Yes, I gotta get some of my car. Just heard your conversation. He heard you talking about delivering something. <laughs> he he finally is like, okay, I, I I know when to hold him, I know when to fold him, I know when to walk away. <laughs> Best in peace, Kenny, and very uh, very well done, very mm-hmm. well done. And, and Bibby knew when the, he had to do his job finally, but he got the most out of what he, did. <laughs> he gets the most out of everything. That's such a talent. I mean, you can't you hate the man, but you can't. Hate the man. Yeah, you can you can hate the player. You can't hate the game. That, He's an anti hero. Right? He's a perfect anti hero. Yeah, it, it's exactly that. I love it. I love it. Even when he tried to hustle food to fucking paper boy, he's like, "Can we take this wood?" <laughs> 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 and every time, shout out Zach. Yeah, shout out to Zaxby's. And every time he's in a Very fucked nice. up situation too, Bibby seems to talk his way out of it. He with the apparently the, the dude he was on the phone with and the Mexicans, <laughs> then the, this lady who might be his, his his side piece, and then this this white lady. You know, he came up with this whole thing that he worked for the construction people. What did you say? He put that wood on retainer. <laughs> he's like, I loaned this to y'all. Y'all didn't pay me my money, so I got to take it back. And she's like, "That's our wood." He's like, "By the way, uh-huh. 
By the way, so remember when he's uh, when they leave his baby mama's? We're, we're assuming it's his baby's mama's place. Uh, when they're leaving the first time, and he goes, "Oh man, she's crazy. She's uh, whack. I'm guess I'm gonna have to stay with my other girl tonight, huh?" <laughs> Things other girls, the uh, quinceanera. Jesus Christ, man! <laughs> <laughs> Jesus, this guy grimy. <laughs> and I, I, you know what? I I love the uh, the music selection in here. It's just one song. It's one jazz song. But that constantly plays when it's the fast, like, uh, just this fast paced jazz in this whole thing, which really throws off, like, uh, it adds to and it, and it calms you, but also, you know, like, shit's going down. It reminds me of a real episode of Curb Your Enthusiasm, even at the end, when you see that face that Paperboy yeah. makes, and he's just like, man, I'm in this fucked up situation, man. Like, and there ain't no way out of it. And he's in that barber chair, just like looking around, like, fuck like without saying the word fuck his eyes say the word fuck and it's just the jazz music playing and it's like I, this episode is just so fucking well done I, I, from top to bottom I love it you, you know something else that I think uh, I don't know I mean we forgot but we should definitely point out Bibby is also an awesome fucking barber oh yeah yes. right I mean, after that haircut I was like wow could I pull that off I wonder if I can play that off. Also, um, it. You remember when we see his son? His son's hair is fucking on. It, it's on point. On point. Well, yeah. He's got yeah. those nice three lines right in the side, and then he's got the matching three lines in the eyebrow. Yeah, like, I dude. was looking at it when they, they got him. I was like, wow, his son hair. Because I was like, is, is Bibby a really good barber? Yes. Let me right. pay attention to the other haircuts that he obviously did. And when they showed his, yep. his the older son, yeah, he was fresh. Real fresh. Absolutely. Like, and, that was a good fucking haircut. Yeah, he's good. He's good at what and he shit, does. When he finished the uh, Paperboy's haircut, Paperboy's hair looked good. He, he's good at his craft. He just like is trying to do a hundred one other thing. He's trying to sell cable. Uh, maybe he tried to get Paperboy the <laughs> cable with a K. <laughs> with a K. <laughs> he's trying to sell toothpicks. Fifty cents. <laughs> That's his best line. That's his best fucking line. Hey man, you want a toothpick? Fifty cents. <laughs> <laughs> like, no, nah, I'm good, man. Uh, how else are they going to make the $35 without putting all those posters up, man? Um. <laughs> <laughs> Which, by the way, like, as ridiculous as all of it is, like, I mean, hey, that's, that's how you start making that money, man. You nickel and dime it until you get until you have enough, you know? Multiple. Well, it's his dream to open up his own shop. What's he get his income tax? WNBA team. <laughs> WNBA team. That's right. That's right. <laughs> With income tax money. <laughs> Can you imagine how much of a nightmare your life would be if you worked at Bibby's uh, barbershop? Oh, Fuck. Man. Oh, my. You would never make money. Or, or, if, you, or uh, if you were a bit one of Bibby's customers. I feel like the more. Or the more if he like hired other barbers, the more responsible you are, the more you probably actually ran it. Right, right. You know, like all the managerial duties would probably fall on you. And so it would kind of be a nightmare in that perspective. Yep. That's facts. I can agree with that. But yeah, this this episode's so fucking it's so fucking funny. And I'm trying to think of like as we round this out, a big theme. That is this episode, and it's really, I think the biggest thing is we find out just like a lot about Al, and a, and all like I think you pointed out the the most, Jeff. Like he has shot motherfuckers for less. This motherfucker is wasting <laughs> yeah. his time, and we see the patience that Al has. And I think, I think this is a, a character development episode for Al as much as it's a a comedy episode, because as, as well, we I think oh go ahead. No, 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 finish your thought, man. I was going to say, as we enter into the rest of this of this season. So anyway, what I was saying is. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> you ass. Baby. <laughs> no, 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 honestly, finish your thought. That was just, I was like, all right, I got to do this. <laughs> as we enter the, the rest of the season, I think it, it's, it's blatantly pointed out uh, how, like, Paperboy is just like, he's grown. Like, he's, he's, he's changed in a lot of minor ways. To become this bigger person at the end of the day. Um, so yeah, that was just kind of my, my thought on that. And something for people to look out for as we continue with the series. Your thought, though. Jeff. Uh, uh, I think that, and honestly, it just goes back to uh, what I was saying before with the, with the whole thing with the barbershop. And I was just like, I just don't get it. I think that that's, that is the point of this episode. Because 
if you remember when we started doing this one of just the random trivias, not the episode trivias, but like the random overall show trivia mm-hmm. on IMDb, um, Donald Glover points out that he wanted to give white people a view into the black culture that they wouldn't normally get. And I think that's very much a big part of this episode, not just the barbershop culture, but, you know, the uh, the, the confidence man, you know, like the BB of it. We all know one. Everybody oh, yeah. knows one. So and I, you know, what's great about Bibby is that his stereotypes kind of transcends other races. Like I got to know everyone that's not, you know, extreme as him, but that just will do things like him and just of all races, colors and creeds. There's a Bibby. <laughs> oh yeah. There's I mean, a Bibby. That's <laughs> everybody true. knows a Bibby. Everybody knows a Bibby. Everybody knows a Bibby. Fast talking, hustling, son of a bitch that's just good at something though, which is how they're they're able to survive. That's why you can't like lose them. It was like I, I you make me hate you so much, <laughs> but I definitely need this one thing that you yeah. do because you do it so well. I mean when you need that clean pee. <laughs> <laughs> clean pee man, phones. Cable hookup, like honestly, I bet Bibby could get you a really good deal on cable and internet. <laughs> like if I knew Bibby was had the hookup with internet, oh, I know I'm about to get that Google Fiber for like twenty bucks. <laughs> you know, I probably can't use oh, yeah. it between the hours of like you know one a.m. and eight a.m. or some <laughs> crazy shit like that. Right? But, you know, twenty bucks for a fiber. I'm you know I'm good, man. I need a bedtime. <laughs> This is a more oh, this is man. a more complex version of Tracy. It, it reminds me of right, like well, yeah, yeah, yeah. Like Tra- Tra- Tracy's more of a thug, yes, who goes to jail for his crimes eventually. While Bibby is the guy who just he doesn't get caught. Yes, exactly. Well, no, 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 he has at least he had has he been caught? Because remember when he's in the car, he's like, I can't go back to jail. Yes. Oh, so they yeah. say I well, can't go to back to jail, or I can't go to jail. No, I can't. I love it. He's like, I can't go to jail. You know that I'd be, I'd be the lady yeah. or something like that. Like, <laughs> <laughs> I'd be somebody girlfriend real quick. <laughs> <laughs> I love. It. He knows how. He knows how masculine and not masculine he is. Like when when Paperboy, when he's like, hey, come help me lift up the three boards, and he's like, you better grab five, and he's like, I don't got all those kind of muscles. <laughs> 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 He knows oh the limits God. of his masculinity, and I think that's hilarious for fucking Bibby. Uh, Terry, any final he thoughts? He knows his strengths. He knows his weaknesses. Uh, God, I, I don't know. There's, I think there's probably so many. I, I, I could keep talking about so many, so I'm trying to like narrow down what you guys go first. Well, I was going to say, any themes, though? Like, I hit on the theme, and I think it's the biggest theme that does carry over, minus just funny situational moments, having, you know, building the anxiety of what this season creates. Uh, it's this character development of, like, a little bit more into Paperboy's world. I don't know if I'm right wrong, if anybody has an opinion about that, but I think that's really what the biggest takeaway is from this episode that we can carry with us going forward into the next, like, six episodes, you know? Right, right. Jeff, any any final thoughts on, on that or anything else? I think that this episode is probably, at least so far, the the best illustration of robbing season, and also, but also not in the way you'd expect because you you hear robbing season, you think of the first episode, of the kids. You know, going to the uh, Miss Chicken place or whatever Miss, and Miss literally Minis, holding yeah. them up with a fucking gun. Mm-hmm. Whereas, like, well, but, you know, there's you can rob people in other ways. Look at, I mean, fuck, that's what Bibby's doing. He's robbing everyone, but in such a different way. Yes, I love that. That's Robin season. Terry. It's Robin season. Uh, I, I guess just the very last one. Part where you just see the uh oh man i just fucked up look on <laughs> al's right. face as he's sitting down to get his haircut from this new barber and he's like the man's like two or three and he's just like um uh, uh, uh and you see bibby you know he's like oh I'm i love it i love like that motion yeah but... a fake one and immediately you know he offered 
Al a seat immediately as soon as he walked in. So he was like, right on time, baby boy, sit down. And he, you know, he skipped some and he's like, okay, oh, I'm hurt. But right then on time, Fibby I didn't even know we had an appointment right today. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he's just going to squeeze him in. But then all of a sudden, another person just sits in the seat that Bibby's oh, in. So yeah, he man. just, you know, it didn't really hurt Bibby at all. But Al's just like, oh, man, I fucked up. And, I think uh, a part of that was also, though, that Bibby knew Al will be back. Yeah, 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 he knew. He knew. That's why I wasn't like, ah, oh, he'll come back. It's so fucking and pe- honestly, so fucking ever petty. since I moved to Austin, and Denver now. I haven't had like a professional haircut. Shout out T Rob. Uh, <laughs> no one's touched my hair since. <laughs> I need to find a real barber. You gotta find some. You gotta find your next baby. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, well, I, I love this episode. I loved it. again. I loved everything about it. And um, yeah, I, I, I think this is the most I think I'd laughed in an episode. To be quite honest. I'm trying to think of the rest of the episodes, and while it is all like dry humor and and maybe a line here, a line there, this is the most consecutively scene for scene. Like I fucking laugh yeah. my ass off, yeah, because of Bibby. Like I don't. Yeah, I, there's I, other episodes where I may have laughed harder, but not as much. Yeah, con- consecutive laughs like back to back, and I, I remember watching this the first time, and I'm just like. Bibby's the fucking best con artist I've ever seen in a long time. And, uh, yeah, I, I want more Bibby in, in season three. So, <laughs> uh, how would you rank this episode? It's ranked out of what? Nine point what? Nine point one? Nine point uno. I'd give it, I'd give it, a, I'd give it a nine point three tops. Like, that would, I would give, I would definitely give it that. What do you think, Jeff? I could see 9.5. Really? Now, I wouldn't rate that after the first watch, but going back and watching it multiple times, yeah. Because every time you watch it, you find a new joke you missed before. Yes, that's true. That's definitely true. Uh, Terry, what would you rate this? Uh, Just, man, almost a 9.8. And I guess next week we'll get into the 10.0 episode for me. So. Oh. Oh, Nine point so eight. This is one week, of just so amazing. Yeah, I'm it's, like you know, I was excited for this one. And and like I like I said, we're we're really touching on this. I think of the season two recap, but like every episode offers its own unique insight into why we should be suspenseful in this world of Atlanta. It's it's really interesting. Um, but yeah, I, I love this episode. I'm glad everybody. I'm listen. I love Jeff. What, is what here. would you rate it, man? I, oh, you said nine point three. Like, mind, a, like a nine point three top. I mean, I even y'all might have tipped yeah. me. I'll go to nine point four. Fuck it. I I I really really enjoyed. Goddamn this right episode. you will. <laughs> I really really like this episode. I'm so glad Jeff you're here. Uh, and and Terry, I am so glad. Again, we were like, had anybody asked me a month ago, three weeks ago, whenever I reached out to Terry the first time, like we were gonna make this happen. I would have loved to. I'm glad we are making this happen. And and uh, Terry, you got to. Uh, be on here with us, and you continue to be on here for the for the rest of the of the series, man. Fucking exciting. On that note, Terry, where can people find you on social media if they want to talk to you more about this series, about this episode, or about this season? Uh, if you want to also find just you know just the best free events in the cities of Austin, Denver, and Dallas, you can just find me on uh, both Twitter. And Instagram, also Facebook, just at Baller ATX, letter A as in Austin, and TX for Texas. And that will also just link you to our Denver site and our Dallas site, too. And uh, if you're just looking for some free concert, uh, free movies, or just uh, an alcohol company giving out free booze, <laughs> well, we'll find it for you. <laughs> Lovely. Jeff, where can people find you? If they even if they just uh, want to say hi to you, you can find me at Don Cheadle's driveway at littledicky 2com on Skype. Uh, <laughs> you can try and find me on Facebook, and you can uh, continue standing six feet away from me with a mask on in public. I love that. You can do that with me too, or you can also follow me, <laughs> Money Blakeweather. Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, Snapchat. It's all Money Blakeweather. You can follow the show, Unfiltered Bachelor. Facebook, Instagram, Twitter. You can find it on your favorite podcast app, uh, Google Play, iTunes, Stitcher, Spotify, anywhere podcasts are. That's where the show is. Please, everybody, tell your friend to tell their friend. 
if if you want us to all be friends and they love Atlanta and you love us too, you love the, the way things are going, please like, share, write a review. That helps us get bigger and that helps more Atlanta fans find us. That helps, that helps more fans of Little Dicky series find us. That helps more fans of any any part of dating or relationship talk find this podcast. I want to thank everybody for tuning in, whether it's morning, evening, afternoon, whatever time you're listening to this. I appreciate you. I love you. Hope to see you on the next one. Stay Corona free. And until the next episode, which is going to be an amazing one, we will see you. Peace. Girl, what's your problem? Cause I know it's hard sometimes Baby, just give me some time Ooh, on and out Girl, we can solve them If you just give me some time I can open up your